In 1970, a television program debuted that changed the way millions of people looked at faith. The Hour of Power. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Featuring the ministry of Robert Schuler, taught a generation that through God's love, your scars can be turned into stars. It was an idea that launched the most popular inspirational television program of its time. And today, the Hour of Power continues with a new voice for a new generation. When you put your trust in God, nothing can stop you. Pastor Bobby Schuler will encourage you and share a message that can give you a new perspective on life. Because whatever your circumstance or the obstacles you face, this moment can be your Hour of Power. Good morning, dear friends. Welcome to the Hour of Power and thanks for your support to us. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Today, the message of Pastor Babishala is to build a great life in God's kingdom. Pastor Babishala teaches us, we have to build our life upon a rock, that is, a life under God's loving care and way, because this kind of life can weather the storm and heavy rain. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. When we live daily under God's way, to love and care our family and neighbors, to forgive others, to let go of bitterness and judgment, to live honestly with integrity, our life will be blessed with happiness. And this is the great life in God's kingdom. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Our program is bilingual broadcast. If your TV is the equipment that can facility, you can choose to watch our power in original English or Cantonese dubbing. <laughs> This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. And welcome visitors and church family. We love being with you. Thank you for joining us. You know, it's so important that you do not measure your healing by your feeling. Faith is not a feeling. Release your faith today by confessing God's word over any feeling. You are loved. Cohen wants you to know his name is Cohen and Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Say hi. Say hi. Anyway, we're so glad you're with us today. If you're, if you're here with your friends or family or by yourself or whatever, we just pray that you find friends here. We're so grateful for all of you who are watching on television and online. We really believe that today God has a great word for you. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much that you love us. Stand with us this morning, this day. Thank you, Lord, that we don't have to walk through life alone, that you're with us and we trust you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Turn to the person next to you and say, God loves you, and so do I. Jesus, my strength. 
preparation for the message? John 13, 12. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Amen.
Chris and Nick Nickich are father and son who co-wrote the new book, 1% Better, Reaching My Full Potential and How You Can Too. Last year, Chris became the first person with Down syndrome to finish an Ironman triathlon, and his story inspired by a commitment to getting just 1% better each day. His encouragement is that whether training for a triathlon, improving relationships, or working towards goals and dreams, we can accomplish anything when we make slow and steady progress. Please welcome Chris and Nick Nickich. Hey guys, hi, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. For those who don't know a lot about you, tell us a little bit about your story. So, uh, I'm Chris Nickich. I'm a nine man. I did exactly uh, Kevin Bashir. And most importantly, I'm here to run a uh, one turn five Boston Marathon right here in Boston. And I'm the uh, uh, father of two uh, wonderful children and married to the most amazing woman for 35 years. I own my own business, and um, it's been, been quite a journey uh, watching Chris go through this uh, last couple of years. That's awesome. You have such an amazing story. What made it motivated you to train and take part in a triathlon? It's uh, kind of like my dream. It has three categories. One is to uh, be independent and uh, to uh, go around places yeah. and just like uh, be part of the Boston family. New York family, oh God. Yeah, and on New Year's, Eve of, of, uh, New Year's Eve of 2019, Chris wrote down his dreams and I, we, my wife and I listened to them and said, why not? Why can't he have his dreams if he's willing to work hard enough? And that's how we came up with the goal of doing an Ironman so he could become a public speaker and 
uh, you know, all the other things that come with that. And so Chris is a living testament to the power that, that, uh, of the, and the gifts that God has given him and his ability to work for them um, and to pursue his dreams through good effort and, and getting 1% better every day. And uh, he's, he's been wonderful in what he's been able to do to be an example to others like him around the world that they, can, they too uh, can, can leverage the gifts that God gave them to, to do things um, that none of us thought were possible. When you think about an Iron Man too, it's like just an incredible accomplishment and it's an amazing thing for anyone to do. Your new book is called 1% Better. Share with us the heart behind this idea and how we can grow uh, by getting, you know, 1% better every day. That was my idea. <laughs> I actually uh, came up with that, you know, super mindset prayer. And uh, over a year ago, I started with... Uh, one percent shift in the squat, and then I couldn't be able to swim back around. I started just like from my body, uh, from my run and run that shift, and um, that is called one percent. And, and two years later, two and a half years later, you do an Ironman. Two, two and a half years later. I'll become an eye man. And that's really the principle. You start with one of something and then you just believe you can do one more and one more and one more. And, you know, Chris can now do 400 push ups, sit ups, and squats. He can do an Ironman. He can do a marathon. Wow. All because for two and a half years, he was willing to just do one more every other day. Uh, and so the potential is just now limitless based on what we were able to see. That's so awesome. What an, what an encouragement. Uh, Nick, you say that God plans for uh, uh, God's plans for us are much better than our own. How has this pro been proven true in your life and in Chris's life? Well, when Chris was born, we were devastated uh, because we were told by all the experts of all the things Chris couldn't do. Uh, God had a different plan. When Chris was five months old, he had open heart surgery, and um, you know, on day seven. Um, they said uh, there's no hope that his uh, surgery uh, would be, that he wouldn't need a, a heart monitor uh, and a pacemaker. So uh, we, we asked all of our friends to pray for him. And then on day eight, the doctors came back in um, and said, you know, we don't know what happened. This has never happened before. He doesn't need a pacemaker. And we thought, well, that's because God has a bigger plan because Chris couldn't do an Ironman uh, 20 years later with a pacemaker. And so um, God has a plan that we can't even begin to understand. And so we just trust that we do his will. We ask for his strength, for guidance, and we just trust that we're doing his will, and, you know, because there's a bigger vision, things that we just can't even begin to imagine. None of us could have imagined this scenario, um, you know, even two or three years ago, let alone 20 years ago. But God had a plan, and he brought me and my wife together to bring that plan uh, to, to fruition and to bring Chris to this point where he's making a positive impact in the world. Yeah. God, God has a bigger vision for what, what Chris can do and what the rest of us can do. It's so encouraging. What, what encouragement really do you hope and have for anybody who, you know, really wants to start something but really doesn't know where to begin? You know, start we, small, go on pursuit of all day, work hard, eat your party, <laughs> and that is the course and hope. Did you say eat your plan, protein? Right? <laughs> yeah, get your protein through your party. That, that is the plan, really, start small. Yeah. You know, it, it's kind of like um, you can't see uh, way out, but what you can see is is do one thing today and do one more thing tomorrow. Read one more verse. Just do one more. Just, uh, you know, give one more person some hope. And just until it becomes a mindset and a habit, and then, you know, the, the, the power of what you can do in your gifts really starts to come alive. That's awesome. Wow. Well, this has been a great uh, interview and a great book. Chris and Nick Nikic, thank you so much for your time with us. And thank you for being an encouragement to so many people out there who want to improve their lives. We really are grateful for both of you. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Maybe we can come visit in person one day. Yeah, we'll do it. Sounds good. <laughs> thank you, man.
Would you stand with us? We're going to say this as we do every single week. Hold your hands out like this as a way of receiving from the Lord. We're going to say this together. I'm not what I do. I'm not what I have. I'm not what people say about me. I am the beloved of God. It's who I am. No one can take it from me. I don't have to worry. I don't have to hurry. I can trust my friend Jesus and share his love with the world. Thanks, you be seated. It's a question, maybe you've already answered it, but there's a question that almost everybody in this room is unconsciously asking all the time. We're asking it when we wake up and when we go to bed. We're especially asking it when we have angst about our own death or some looming dread with a sickness. And it's a question that's been asked by philosophers for thousands of years. And is, there's been many answers to it. And the question is this, who has a truly great life? I don't mean a good life. I don't mean like a life that's like kind of nice and it's a good life, it's a good life. I mean the kind of legendary, amazing life that so many of us secretly want. Who has that life? And the next question naturally for so many people would be, what do I have to do to be in that very rare, lucky few that I lived the kind of life that most people would say was epic, amazing, legendary, was truly great. My hope today is, if you don't hear anything else I say today, is that the world's definition of that life is false. And that the best and greatest life you can live, it's available right now, is under God's loving care and way. I hope to prove that to you today, that you leave with that song in your heart and that you carry it to your grave. It's interesting because as a fan of history, you know, uh, you kind of notice how bad weather places create strong people. <laughs> Whether it's a bad desert place or a bad rainy place, what, California is amazing. The weather is so good. And I, I had the privilege, and I mean that, of living in Oklahoma, a bad weather place for six years. I talk about Oklahoma a lot. Oklahomans are obsessed with weather because it has such a big effect on their life. If you were to live in Oklahoma, the winters are ice cold, snow and sleet all the time. The summers are horribly hot. So people who live in bad weather places prepare for life. They prepare for the storm. They prepare for the rain. They're ready. So Jesus talks about this. He's from a hard weather country, a desert. He says, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a man who builds his house on the rock. The rains came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew against that house, but it stood because it had its foundation on a rock. But anyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a fool who built his house on a wadi. You know what a wadi is? It's like a riverbed. It's built his house on a riverbed. The rains came down, the streams rose, and the wind beat against that house and it fell with a great crash. He says, whoever builds his house on what I'm saying and puts it into practice. If someone takes the sermon I just preached, believes it as wisdom, walks out in it and practices as a disciple what I'm teaching you, he or she will live the kind of life that everybody wants to live. The kind that even though the rain is coming down and the wind is beating against the house, it stands strong and endures. Jesus is preaching that there's a kind of life available in his teachings 
Not, not just in his spirit, and we need his spirit, but in his teachings, that we take it seriously, that the, the way to have an epic, amazing, joyful, a life that oozes with happiness and, and, and even glory, that the way to live that kind of life is to take his words seriously, to live daily under the care, comfort, and way of God. And the unhurried rhythms of grace, to have a completely new heart, a heart that forgives because it truly wants to forgive, a heart that lets go of bitterness, a heart that lives honestly with no lies, a heart that's not insatiable, always lusting and wanting more, but one that's at peace with God's will, one that lets go of judging his or her neighbor and lets go of gossip and competition and anger and wrath, one that helps others, not just for show, but believes in helping, one that prays and fasts because, not so that people see them praying and fasting, but because they believe that God will respond to the prayer of a child, one that believes with faith that my faith can move mountains, Someone who takes Christ's words and lives by them is a happy person. That is a person destined to live a great life. No one else. That's the life. That's it. And guess what? It's available to everybody. If you, you know what else is true? Is that when that other, those other people who build their house on the wadi, when it rains and the rains come down and it falls, they can look to a rock and see a house standing upon it and know there's a place to run. Isn't that good too? To know that when you endure your storm because you're rooted in the life of Christ and his teachings, you'll have a comforting place. People will know there's a better way. You can encourage someone in that way today. The world's answer to this question, the default answer, is almost always a great life belongs to a lucky few. Great life belongs to those who are talented enough, rich enough, good enough, lucky enough, married to the right parents enough to make it to that thing that everybody wants. In other words, it used to be if you wrote a book that you would sell your books and a fair amount of people would read them. Or it used to be that if you went to a tavern and you wanted to hear music, a band had to play it because there was no such thing as a stereo system. And so people needed bands. Can you imagine people needing bands? You know, it used to be that there was no photography, so people needed an artist to paint a picture of their family so that artists would have work to do. There'd be need for lots of artists, need for lots of musicians. And that need has diminished over time where you have these outlier rock stars, outlier super artists, outlier super authors that, that take almost everything. I think two years ago, 16,000 books were published and the top four books that were published made more money than all the other books combined. This extremist, Dan, you see? So we point to the, the inheritors of extremist, Dan, people like this, as, you know, the ultimate life. The biggest winners in politics, in film, in industry, in publishing, in music, we look at billionaires, rock stars, presidents, uber politicians, and think, wow, if I could just be like them. Don't get me wrong. Many of these are wonderful people. There's nothing wrong with their life. But, but there is something in our head, isn't there? That like, if only, if only I could live a truly great life like that. But only a few, a few can. And yet, what if I told you most of the people in that extremistan set do not feel happy with their lives? That overall, they are less happy with their lives than most of us are with our lives. That rates of divorce are, are higher in that group than in our group. Would you believe me? Isn't it an irony that no one for a second doubts that what I just said is true? And yet within us, there is still this desire, what if I could be like that? The good news is God offers something to us that is so much better than what the, the rare few in extremist have attained. And I want you to know 
that it's, it's, a, it's a, um, a mirage. It's a, you're in a desert, you're thirsty, but what you see in those people is, is a complete illusion. It's your thirst and, and, and drive for something more and the projection that they're giving you through perfect pictures and audio clips that's, that's fooling us, fooling us all to believe that that's a great life, but it's not. Jesus teaches us that the greatest, happiest, richest life is available now in the unhurried rhythms of life in his kingdom. It's the kind of life that raises people from the dead. It's the kind of life that walks on water. It's the kind of life that's not available to anyone unless they let go of that and hold fast to this, the Spirit of God and His Word. Unhurried life of God in me now. It's right available to you right now. That's who has a great life. You know who has a great life? You do. It's right there. Right there. It's right there. You're looking for something you already have. In the Spirit of God and His salvation and in, in His teaching. So that's the, that's it. That's what we want. You know, I think that there's a, I, be, I believe that if you have a good enough why, you can do just about anything. Why should I follow Christ? Uh, why should I, why should I do what Jesus teaches in terms of living towards my neighbor? And the why for most people is so that I can be a respectable Christian. Or the why is so that I'm not a bad person or a hypocrite. Or I don't, so that I'm not ostracized or pushed out. I'll do about what everybody else does. I don't want to be a bad person. The reason we should live this way is because it's the most epic, amazing, joyful life we can live. Anytime you see the word blessed, most, most of us misunderstand it. When we hear blessed, Blessed. We even add the extra syllable just to make it sound more <laughs> blessed. You know, it's blessed. We say, ble <laughs> it's like blessed. Like, that's your, that's your why. In the Bible, this word blessed, makarios, it means the closest word we have in English, and it doesn't even cover it, is happy. But happy is not even a good word. It just means oozing with happiness. Super happy. Like, you are so fulfilled, enriched, brought to life, happy, full of joy, oozing with joy. That's Makarios. Do you hear that when you hear blessed? When Jesus is washing the feet of his disciples, if, you, if you've grown up in church, you've heard the story a million times. Right before he's crucified, Jesus takes off his garment, which is, you know, a nice garment, and he puts on a towel and he dresses like a slave and he goes around and washes the feet of these young people. He's doing this and he washes their feet and they're embarrassed because they have so much respect for it and he cleans it and then he says, no servant is greater than his master, no student is greater than his rabbi. I have done this for you, do this for each other, okay? If he had left it there, then the why would have been, you're supposed, you know, it's, it's good for you. This is a good thing. You should do it. You should do it. But that's not what he says. In John 13, 17, right after he says it, so he says, he says, so serving each other and loving each other and serving the people that follow you, he says, now that you know these things, you will be makarios. You will be blessed if you do them. He means, if you do what I just did here, if you wash people's feet in the spirit that I did it, with the heart that I did it, you will be oozing with joy and life. It's how he begins the Sermon on the Mount. When he says, blessed are the poor in spirit. He's saying, blessed are you if you're sick. Blessed are you if you just got fired. Blessed are you if you just lost a limb. Blessed are you if you just lost someone you love. Blessed are you if everything in your life is falling apart. Blessed are you if you just lost your business because someone betrayed you. Blessed are you if you're being sued and you're losing because you can't afford good attorneys. 
Blessed are you if you hate your job. Blessed are you if your marriage isn't going well. Blessed are you if you're broken up with your children or your parents. Blessed are you if everything in your life is going wrong. Why? Because what I'm about to teach you and show you is that you can be the most joyful, happy, life-fulfilled, oozing with joy kind of person, a house that's built on a rock kind of person. If you just do this, if you just do with us, if you just do what I'm telling you to do today, all of those things will melt away and you will find victory in me by just living in my kingdom, by just living in my kingdom, by just living in God's loving care and way. That's who has a great life. It's available to all of us right now. We already have it. It's right here. It's available to all of us right here, right here. But this is the promise, and I can tell you, I've lived it, this is what's available now. Living in the unhurried life of God now. It's available, it's available. So who's happy? Who's got a good life? Anyone who believes and trusts that they're in the kingdom right now. Anyone who lives under God's loving care and way. That's who, that who, that's who has a great life. You'll see. You'll see, the gospel is coming to heaven now, right now. And you can test it. You can try it. You can just, you can literally try this today. Even if you're not even sure you believe, you can try these things and you'll begin to see the kingdom of heavens boiling up with inside of you if you live with this right kind of heart today. And you don't have to worry about it. It's not, it's not choosing a bad life now for a good life later. It's choosing a good life now that is so awesome it goes on after I die. So, so, so today, really today, not because you should or because you ought to be a good person or it's the right thing to do, but if you really want to live a great life, turn your heart into God's heart. Turn your heart into the kind of heart that walks every moment in the unhurried rhythms of grace. Just refuse to, to live from a place of pride, worry, and hurry. Have a heart that forgives and that wants to forgive. Have the kind of heart that lives honestly and doesn't deceive or trick or fool or put up a front. Live with the kind of heart that's not always more, always insatiable, always needing more in my life. Live the kind of heart that doesn't need to judge. It lets go of judging. It lets God be the judge. A kind of heart that helps and is, is interruptible and is available to people who are hurting, who are considered outsiders, and doesn't do it so that peop other people will see or that I get thanks, but just because I've learned to see people the way God does as his, his treasures that are loved by him that I recognize that living by the golden rule, like what would I want if I was that person? What would I need if I was in that position? What would the golden rule be for me to love that person in the way that they need to be loved right now and to be so unhurried and, and unprideful that I can be interrupted by this person now and love them? And to pray and to fast and to believe that God will answer my prayer and that what he, his prom, what he promises in his word is true to believe with faith that any person can do anything if it's God's plan. And all we have to do is be the messenger and tell the mountain to move because that's God's plan. You know, like the, living in this kind of life is what's available now for you. I hope it doesn't sound judgy. I want you to hear that we're all, that it's so easy to be seduced by this mirage, but that you, you have, you have the canteen, you have, you have, Rivers of living water available to you already. Believe it and live in it today. Live in the unhurried rhythms of grace. So Father, we just ask for that. We just ask right now for an outpouring of your spirit. Lord, do we need you now more than ever? I just pray your spirit to fall in power under everyone under the sound of my voice. Those who hear these words critically with hard, hard hearts, Lord, push through that, Lord. Those who who are feeling tired and, and don't have ears here, open their ears and pray, God. Those who want what I'm saying but can't seem to find it or can't bring themselves to believe it, give them faith, I pray, Lord. Pour out your spirit in our hearts, Lord. For any person that would pause in this moment and say, Lord, I need you, 
Would you answer that prayer? You said anybody who knocks, you would answer the door. Anybody who seeks would find, we're looking for you, God. So I pray, I pray, God, for an outpouring of your spirit. Give to them what you gave to me. Lord, I pray for it in Jesus' name. It's the outpouring of your spirit, God. And that today would be a new day for everyone under the sound of my voice. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me? We're going to sing together. Bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for watching our power and your support to us. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 24, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, it's like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Today, the message of Pastor Babishala is to build a great life in God's kingdom. Pastor Babishala teaches us, we have to build our life upon a rock. That is, a life under God's loving care and way, because this kind of life can weather the storm and heavy rain. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, it's like a wise man who built his house on the rock. When we live daily under God's way, to love and care our family and neighbors, to forgive others, to let go of bitterness and judgment, to live honestly with integrity, our life will be blessed with happiness. And this is the great life in God's kingdom. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, it's like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Our Power This Motivational TV program is broadcast weekly on TVP Pearl Channel. Every Saturday at 10 a.m. in the morning and every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. And you can also watch online simultaneously on My TV Super or www.hourofpower.org.hk. Thanks for joining. God loves you and see you next week on TVP Pearl. Join us again next week as Pastor Bobby Schuler brings you a message of hope on the Hour of Power. And Pastor Bobby would love to hear from you. Just write us. Until next week, remember to let your hopes, not your hurts, shape your future.